that they can catch something that might have been missed. Does anybody know what happened to Isabel Sellis? Pretty God to please help us find her. I always dream about her. 40 to 50 officers walking the neighborhood where Isabel disappeared without a trace. It's just really hard, really hard. We want our baby home, and we want this nightmare over. Dramatic developments tonight in the case of missing child Isabel Sellis. Nearly 50 cops have descended on the Tucson, Arizona neighborhood where little Isabel vanished nearly two years ago. This beautiful little six-year-old just vanished, flat out vanished from her bedroom in the middle of the night. And right now, cops are in the area. Are they just canvassing or do they know something? Are they looking for something or someone? I don't know if it's in this neighborhood or not, um, but somebody out there knows something, and that's the only way they're gonna, you know, we're gonna get get yes. our answers is that person coming up front and saying it. So hopefully, this time around, they will. Tonight, cops are telling us they're contacting family members, not the missing child's mother, father, and brothers, but extended family and quote unquote associates. What does that mean? Remember, Isabel's dad says he believes one of his relatives knows something. It's been almost two years. If they think this person knows something, why aren't they naming names and turning up the heat to get some answers? Straight out to Corey Marshall, reporter KGUN in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, what is going on with, this is an extraordinary number of uh, law enforcement and associates of law enforcement descending on this neighborhood. Describe the scene and what you're learning tonight. Good evening, Jane. You know, we've been out here all day. Um, it's very reminiscent of what the scene first looks like. If you look back at the scene footage of when uh, little Issa, as they call her, uh, first went missing nearly two years ago, as you mentioned, uh, police going door to door, uh, asking neighbors um, if they lived here two years ago, uh, what they saw, what they heard, asking them to answer questions on a questionnaire. Uh, one thing that we're hearing over and over again, as I mentioned uh, right off the top, is that neighbors are saying it's eerily reminiscent of what this neighborhood looked like two years ago. Well, Isabel's parents say the night she disappeared, she went to sleep in her room at 11 at night. Her dad says he fell asleep watching TV on the living room couch near Issa's room, and then he moved back to his own bedroom around 2 in the morning. Then, at about 6.30, a neighbor whose bedroom is just 12 feet away from Isabel, says she woke up because her dogs were frantically barking. Something was odd. My dog, she woke me up. She's very skeptical of people, and when she heard voices, she started barking, and that woke me up. And that's when I noticed the uh, male voices, multiple male voices, and I noticed that the Celis' dogs were going crazy, and they bark a lot, but this was a different type of barking. This was a very, very frantic barking. Now, just a half hour after that odd occurrence, at 7 a.m., the mom leaves for her nursing job and says she did not check on Issa. She didn't check on her daughter. An hour later, Isabel's dad says he discovers that his little angel is missing. Now, cops say there was blood found in the bedroom and a window was open with the screen pushed aside. Now, Lisa Lockwood, investigator, what do you make of that? I remember commenting on this case two years ago when it was fresh. The neighborhood canvas, everything that they had done initially was exactly what they were supposed to do. The resurgence, what's happening right now, my hunch is that there's new information, there's fresh information, and they're going to go out there and try to pick up what they may have missed or hope to spark some, some notice or some interest to get the case going, going again. One thing is certain, somebody knew this child, somebody knew where this child's bedroom was, somebody had the intention, somebody is a close family member or somebody who had worked for the family in some capacity. That's typically, typically the case with abductions like these.